Okay, you're right. So again, converting a 2D face view into a 3D isometric view. This time with a little bit more stretch and challenge and some more complex shapes to problem solve with. So if I was to th consider a spanner shape design like this one, I would firstly break it down into more reasonable, manageable, simple shapes. So if I look at this shape, I'm going to divide it into a rectangle. Then if I consider these are squares around the edge of that design. I can position later my circles. So I'm just going to put two squares. Like so. So this is called a crating technique where you're placing items into simple crates, which are more easy to convert onto this isometric paper. So I'm going to start to transfer this simple shape onto my isometric paper. And for that, I'm gonna consider this as being six centimeters long with a height of one centimeter long. And then the two squares either side being three by three, three by three. So I'm gonna convert this face view now into isometric view. So I'm gonna focus on this left square to begin with, so three by three to begin with. So I'm three high on my vertical and I'm three high on my horizontal. Nice, simple square to begin. Then in the middle of that, I've got my one by six. So from this middle, it's horizontal. So it's going along that back axis by six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Same with this lower edge, one centimetre down. Like so. And again now, this right hand side square being three by three with this one being in the centre. So one up and one down, giving me my three and by three horizontally. And three again, vertically on the other end. So from this point, I can now begin to plan out these circular ends. Okay, so if I imagine there's a circle within that three by three box, given my span, my diameter of my circle being three. And the same on the opposite end. So as I convert these circles into isometric, they'll actually become ellipses. Okay, so I'm just going to plan out very lightly those circles, which are now ellipses. Onto my span ahead. Like so. You can use a tool like so to help you. I prefer to work freehand. And I'm just planning those ellipses out just touching the end of that three by three square that I created to give me that now elliptical spanner head shape. I can then think about the indentations of the spanner head, like so. And I'm gonna make those again one by one. So I'm just coming in from this end, one in by one by one. The same on the opposite end, coming in from that middle section, one by one. Okay, You can now begin to see, if I erase these initial guidelines of that square, you can, you can begin to see that spanner head taking shape. This far end, remove any unnecessary guidelines. Like so. So again, I now need to think about its depth. For this design, I'm going to make it one centimeter deep. So if I imagine I'm adding my depth now on this axis, so at this point 
I know that that corner is going to recede. I know that this corner will recede by one, as well this corner, and the far tip of that spanner head, and this corner here will also recede backwards. Then, oh, and I know that this six will also drop back for that rectangular shape. Then all I need to consider is the, the it's kind of the back face. And I know that the curvature of that spanner head will match this front face. So all I'm gonna do is kind of match that curvature around. Again, joining the rectangle at the back. And the same on this side. Again, matching the curvature of this spanner head. Like so. And put this side in the back. Okay. Again, I can remove some of those construction lines, those heavier lines. So I'll just highlight those again for you. Thanks, sir.